Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the family. Um, uh, I would like to wish you a warm welcome. Um, as you may have noticed, all of our events are now in English. And you may wonder why. Uh, for two reasons. First of all, because we love accents. We think accents are cute. Yes, really. <laughs> and secondly, because the family is scaling. So we are launching internationally. We just opened our new office in, in uh, Barcelona. And so we want to make this knowledge available to as many people as possible. OK? So this is why we decided that even though we may have an accent, even though we may not speak perfect English, we're going to start doing all of our events in English. All right. So before we begin, I'd like to ask, who is here for the first time? Great. Um, welcome. It's always good to see new faces. So for those of you who don't know the family, we are a private investor and we help startups with three things. Education, unfair advantages and capital. If you'd like to know more about the family, feel free to go on our website. It's thefamily.co and visit our YouTube page where you will find all of the talks that we host here every day. So today we're really, really excited to welcome Clément. Clément César is um, the director of business development for Netflix Europe. He has a marketing, a lot of marketing experience. Actually, he used to work for Deezer, where he handled the international development. And we were having a coffee the other day, and he was telling me about all of his experiences launching startups in Europe, Latin America, Brazil. And I was like, "You absolutely have to do a workshop. We have to share this knowledge with our community." So we, this is why we, he's here today, and we're really, really happy to welcome him. Um, so yeah, before we begin, I'd like to give you a couple um, useful information. So first of all, um, the Wi-Fi code is la mifa cc, and the <laughs> yeah, and the family is the Wi-Fi. So this is um, so you can tweet. So if you disagree with something, go on Twitter, share what you think about what we're saying here. If you have questions, don't hesitate. But also, the point of this workshop is that it is, um, I mean, we want this to be as interactive as possible. So if you have a question, just raise your hand and Pauline here, she will come to you with a mic and you can ask your question so that everyone can hear it. Okay, so um, yes, one last thing before we begin. I'd like you to take one minute to talk to the person next to you and tell them who you are and why you're here. It's not over, you can always talk to each other after the workshop, so let's begin. So um, before we start, um, I'd like to know who is um, launching a startup internationally today? Who is going international with their startup? Okay, cool. Well, I hope you guys and everyone else, I hope you learn a lot of things, I hope you find this useful, and please give a warm applause to Clément. Et la télécommande. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, uh, as you uh, love uh, accent, I will uh, keep my uh, French accent. Um, so, as, as you know, I'm French, but um, I will speak in English for uh, this presentation. Um, just uh, to start, maybe um, I would like to present myself. So, uh, I had uh, in a way, 15 years of experience in the tech companies. I, I, uh, my first company was uh, Sun Microsystem, and then I joined uh, Club Internet. So uh, uh, maybe nobody know about <laughs> Club Internet anymore, but it was one of the first ISP in France, and um, and I have the chance after that to work for uh, Deezer. Uh, joined quite at the beginning before um, that we we went worldwide and uh, one year ago um, I joined Netflix on the for Europe so um, that's for uh, my background and I did uh, I guess a lot a lot of different jobs from marketing to uh, project to strategy and business development uh, so uh, I guess some of you are um, are thinking about going international so uh, the idea behind that is, uh, in a way, um, how can we think a little bit uh, today and, and have some Q&A after that about how we can avoid 
in a way um, um, some some difficulties that by just thinking before how to be scalable. Um, it's a big it's a it's a big uh, um, things to say scalable for everything, but I think it really uh, means something when you think about international because uh, uh, the idea is like you have to think about all the company, especially in the internet, of course, that have to have to be um, really scalable from your business model. It has to be, in a way, also scalable in, in France only. But after that, if you think about your product, how you will develop your product in uh, um, 60 um, different languages, in, in, in different uh, uh, culture, how, uh, in a way, you will uh, think about the model for uh, distribution that will be uh, as relevant in France as in Brazil or in Thailand. Um, and uh, at the end, uh, also something very important is like, of course already, some of, the, some of you already have a, a, a small team, but uh, how uh, this team and how you will organize to uh, be able to uh, really um, keep your culture very important and uh, uh, get your values and, and get the right people uh, uh, all over uh, the globe. So first, um, I think it's it's just a reminder. Of course, you know all about that. But the idea is like, what is the scalable model? So a scalable model is really something in a way where um, you can um, have some growth, uh, get more revenues by uh, but keeping a real control of your cost. Um, that means that, for example, if you have a product uh, in France and you go in a launch in Germany, uh, you don't have to to rebuild everything. Um, that's a, a, ma a main point. Or uh, because uh, if you have um, uh, uh, a business model around advertising or around uh, um, um, I don't know, a monthly subscription or something like that, you don't have to change it. Uh, so, of course, you know very well about the big models because uh, they are here in France and all the world, like Facebook or PayPal, but you have many of them um, uh, all over uh, the world. And um, it's very interesting to think about this point first, to be sure that uh, uh, your own business is ready for that uh, when you go for international because you will have so much to do out of that, that it's, uh, it's good that it's uh, already um, down. Um, and after that, also, um, it's of course, and, and that's something you will do uh, by your own, but it's like to sometimes just uh, uh, think about and, and, and get some data around what will be the specificities, for example, in Brazil, where you have very uh, different tax system, where uh, you can really get in trouble if you don't know that, um, or uh, if you uh, have some uh, specificities uh, around um, local culture or how to, uh, uh, you know, like uh, easy things around uh, what will be the uh, the credit card penetration in Thailand or, uh, or in North uh, Africa or this kind of thing. So it's, it, it, it can be of use. Sorry about that, but it's, it's even so. Uh, we, uh, 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 I met some people uh, or some companies that uh, did this kind of mistake because they're thinking just, uh, I have to go fast, I have to run there, uh, and uh, didn't spend enough time before launching uh, about these questions. Um, I think here it's um, it's a point important, very 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 important, and it's it's uh, I think the. the, the one of the pillars of the success over there is like, uh, for example, on the product side, uh, how can I have something that is really, really easy to uh, just open uh, and get live in many territories? So, of course, the internet companies are the best for that. Uh, if you take Facebook or if you take uh, uh, PayPal or if you take uh, uh, Deezer, uh, Netflix, uh, it's the same product all over the, the globe. Uh, it's really uh, the same, meaning that sometimes you have a different language, sometimes you have uh, okay, some uh, um, different minor things, but at the end, uh, on your uh, on on your tech side, you guys who will develop the the the, the front end or um, the mobile apps or uh, um, all the ecosystem uh, will will do it 
for one, and it will be the same uh, everywhere. And that's very important when you maintain all this, uh, uh, this ecosystem to, to be able to have that uh, really updated all the time. So that's something important. But, but in the mean way, how you sure that this product will be relevant in the country you're going? So for example, if you take um, Netflix, Netflix has tried to uh, be able to ingest a lot of local content. But also, it's trying now, and maybe you heard about it, but it's, I think it's a, it's, it's a good move uh, on this side, is like how to find local products that can be spread all over the globe. Meaning, at the beginning, Netflix is like all the international uh, and, and American uh, shows. But today, if you take Narcos, if you take uh, Club de los Cuervos, it's pure uh, Latin American shows, and it's working all over the globe. We are launching... Um, Samara in Italy, uh, we are launching Marseille in France, and these shows are not only for the local market, but they are also for the international. So you think about how I can be relevant locally, but my, this, this decision has to be um, able to spread everywhere, and, and, and that's working. So hopefully, it's a good thing. That means that, in a way, if you have good content uh, in Asia or you have good content in Latin America, it will work everywhere. At Deezer, it was the same thing, meaning like if you find a good music uh, um, uh, somewhere uh, in Europe, uh, it, 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 it can be streamed and listened and enjoyed everywhere. So um, um, I think that that's... Um, more about after that, how you will, um, in a way, recommend and how you will develop to be sure that it's easy after that, meaning that uh, what will be the algorithm behind, what will be the recommendation system that at the end you have this working. So uh, uh, if you are on, on Deezer or Spotify or I don't know, uh, uh, YouTube, you like Latin, um, Latin music, how we be sure that we recommend you? And this music can come from Europe, but it can come from Latin America, really. So that, that's, that's a point. And, um, what we have uh, uh, done also is like on the product side, if you, if you look what, what worked, for example, at Deezer, is like we were able to do some slight co-branding stuff that in a way allowing us, for example, if you work here uh, in France, Deezer will have a co-branding product with uh, Orange, but if you are in Germany, it will be with T-Mobile. If it's um, in uh, uh, Costa Rica, it will be with uh, Tigo and, and, and some local operator or OI or in Brazil. And the idea is like, it's a small thing you think at the beginning. And when we think about that, we think it before going international saying, okay, what we have done here, we are able to do it easily everywhere. So that was very important. And so when we arrived, for example, in Brazil and said to uh, Brazilian carriers, oh, we have a product for you, uh, it works. Because they see that it's easy for them to put their brand, you, you, you switch orange by their old branch, by uh, um, the oil brand or team brand, and, and after that, you have the space to put their content. It's a, it's a small thing, but at the end, it's worth a lot uh, when you go uh, operational on this. Um, so that's about um, distribution. Of course, um, um, you, uh, you know uh, already for your market who are your clients, how to get there, how to reach them, but in a way, that's what you will need to do uh, when you pick a, a, um, a country that you want to go. Uh, meaning, uh, uh, in a way, uh, how can I spend some time uh, knowing about the States, about the UK, about Spain, about Brazil, saying, okay, how, uh, what the competition, what um, the ARPU, uh, uh, the revenues, uh, how what uh, the people, uh, um, how the people behave. Um, and uh, you can learn a lot because, uh, um, for example, uh, a, a good one was for us to distribute uh, in Brazil, for example, with, with Deezer. Uh, one of the success is like we, 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 we discovered that the local culture uh, with a local team was really, really more on social network and on a specific way of communicating. So we, 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 we really changed uh, not our brand, but the way of talking just for Brazil, and it was a big success. So, but we learned that before uh, launching there, and have the, the, the team already there when we, we, when we go. Um, and after that, if you take um, uh, something for us, we thought it was a good idea. For example, we, we spent a lot of time working on the Facebook integration for, uh, at, uh, at Deezer. And the idea was like, wow, uh, if you integrate with Facebook, we will reach 1 billion users instantly. But in a way, um, the point is, 
are these users worth uh, to reach them and if they have the right ways of doing it? Because uh, just to let you know, but two words around that, the idea was if you are looking for an artist or a music on Facebook, you can play it directly using the Deezer player um, in, um, uh, uh, in, in Facebook. And the idea was after that to have people get to know Deezer and uh, subscribe. But what happened is like we have a, a huge amount of people trying, but as these people are well, not really well targeted because it was mostly young people, mostly people who are not the, peop the, 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 the client we want who will be ready to pay for music, we have higher costs by just the fact that these people uh, wasn't, uh, weren't the, the right um, customers. So it was a good idea at the beginning, but at the end we have to really restructure this deal to be to get it better. So sometimes uh, uh, um, you have mistake, but you can you can. It's important to think uh, what are um, the the right partners and how to uh, do it well. So one of the success for for, for Netflix, for Deezer, and for many uh, uh, even Facebook, for many uh, big. Um, players is uh, to do some partnership with ISP or carriers uh, uh, and, and, and for uh, uh, or, or manufacturers and for uh, and for Netflix and, and these are for sure uh, having a, a, a you know the yeah, the application pre-installed and all the Samsung TV or all the Samsung mobile, and to have uh, uh, that also with um, a distribution model for Orange or um, uh, or uh, TNT, or it, it was a, it was a good idea. So that was a big reason of the success of uh, and our ability to go uh, worldwide. Because in a way, it's important that if you could take a good deal, of course, uh, it you will give a little bit a bit of your revenue. You will share your revenue, but it's also a way to reach a big target uh, from the beginning. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, at Netflix or Deezer, when you we open, uh, I don't know, even in Thailand, uh, you can reach uh, uh, 200,000 customers in, in, in two weeks. So it's it's big numbers. So it was sometimes to um, spend some time thinking about what will be the right distribution uh, instead of maybe trying through uh, um, existing one where everyone wants to go through the web, through uh, uh, on the uh, Google Play Store or uh, you know, like uh, Facebook ads, where sometimes you will face more competition than, than, than taking a lot of time trying to find the right, uh, um, in a way, retail or a distributor. Um, last point, um, and I'm going a bit fast because I think we, we can, after that, share some questions. I think it's more relevant uh, for your own uh, business. Uh, Last point is 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 an um, interesting one. As one of the success will be, of course, uh, your product and uh, and how how relevant is it, and if you uh, respond to a need, of course. But how you will uh, succeed will be how do you have the right people? Uh, um, and uh, on that point is um, very complicated because. You can have the right team when you are uh, uh, 10 people, as uh, when I joined um, Deezer, but when you have 500 people, it's not maybe the same kind of uh, profile you're looking for, uh, and, uh, and um, who are able to be really, um, in a way, open and, and uh, excited by a project that is not the same from the beginning, like meaning uh, uh, being a startup in, 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 in France and, and be a global company uh, two years after. So uh, that's something where uh, what I've learned is like there's uh, several tips that can help. The first one is like, um, I think at the beginning, it's always worth to um, find some expert because uh, that will always make the difference. And experts can be a little bit more expensive than uh, uh, people who are uh, easy to do many things. But anyway, that will make the difference uh, if, you take about, if you talk about um, distribution, if you talk about how uh, you will build your CEO and your, 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 uh, your, your, your um, network presence and your PR, all, all this kind of thing, uh, it's worth to pay a little bit more. 
uh, or to share uh, some incentives around the, the companies to get these people. Um, it's very important. That's what I've, uh, I've, I've seen. And uh, uh, I'm not talking about the founders, of course, but I'm talking about when you extend a little bit, uh, it's important. The second thing very important is like, who will be the right people for uh, your first move in one country? Uh, we try uh, uh, Netflix and, 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 and these are several ways. Uh, for example, uh, do you need someone uh, from your own company going uh, over there? Uh, I think that's good for the culture, that's good for um, the management and the understanding, but that's not the right move if you, uh, you, you can you can have several people, but I think you need local people, of course. Uh, I think that's, uh, um, and that's really important. I, we, we see and we saw the difference uh, at Deezer uh, uh, in uh, very specific countries uh, like the UK or uh, Brazil to have people who really know very well uh, the, the the culture will have a good network who will not do any mistakes on the cultural part and um, it will after that will be harder uh, for you to uh, get that people understanding the, your value and the culture and the product but it was uh, to, to spend time like that because having sometimes um, people uh, who are uh, uh, not um, local? Uh, can you can you can wait some time? So uh, that's what what we have learned, and uh, and uh, uh, the 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 point over there will be uh, um, to invest on that also uh, and take a risk in a way. I know it's difficult because the, in a way it's people it's not the same culture. It's not uh, um, you know uh, uh, it's far away, and you you have to trust, but. Uh, um, we experienced that, uh, um, and the, the 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 last point uh, around hiring was also we try um, at the beginning to start sometime with someone alone uh, because we say oh there's a big opportunity uh, for example in in Asia so we put someone alone over there and uh, if it's a very short time it's okay but if it's more than six, one year, uh, I think uh, having a real team, what we call team is like three people, will make the difference also because when you are uh, far away, um, getting motivation, getting, um, uh, you know, like a, a real uh, culture and uh, uh, entrepreneurship mood, it, it, it can be uh, a big challenge. Um, so uh, uh, doing that, that means that, for example, you don't, uh, you choose to go only in one country first, or, uh, and, but, but you will invest more uh, and not um, uh, spread, I will say, your resources everywhere. Uh, and that's one of the um, one of the tricks we 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 see um and uh um i think on the on the on the other points is like how you feel an organization to uh, be able to communicate a lot to share all the document to uh uh, uh find a way to have a, a, a real um management as um uh, you will need to be uh, you will need to be more involved uh, when you have people even in Europe um, uh, who are not with you on a day-to-day -day relationship by uh, by uh, a physical presence in the in the office in a way. Um, so sometimes uh, you can uh, um, you will need some process to be sure that you share the information. Uh, um, so it can be a little bit uh, uh, not a, a, a startup mood anyway anymore uh, by the fact that uh, you need to put some meetings and, and, and weekly meetings and, and sharing the information and be sure that, for example, I don't know uh, um, if some of you work on, on, on Google Docs or this kind of thing, but it's easy to share information on, this, on, this, uh, on these tools. So um, that's uh, how, uh, in a way, you, 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 you have some guarantee that uh, people will know a little bit more about uh, what you're doing all the time. Because as uh, when you're a small company, uh, in two weeks, everything can change. So you need the people to be really uh, um, aware of everything. Um, so that was short, but uh, I don't want to uh, uh, spend too much uh, time on... on, on on some uh, slides, and uh, and the idea for me was more to have a little bit more feedback. If you have any question uh, or specificity around what we have done 
um, uh, at Deezer or Netflix or other companies. And uh, if you have some questions for your own um, companies also, uh, I will be glad to respond. Hello. Uh, I have a question about the last slide uh, you had. Yeah. Uh, it was about uh, the local teams. We see frequently now companies that have like hubs uh, in Berlin, in London or Paris, for example, and managing all Europe from the hub. What do you think about that? Um, so the, the, the idea behind that is, um, um, is to know the strategy. I think um, if you take, for example, Netflix, where I am, there's a hub in Amsterdam. But first, we had some teams locally in the UK, in Germany. And after that, for optimization, we put some people in Amsterdam. But in a way, we know that we need some people in, in France or in the UK or in Germany in big markets to be sure that we have the right way of talking to the media, the right way to reach our customer. So it's more about what is relevant. In Europe, it's not so difficult um, uh, to have a hub for Europe because uh, you, you want to work from uh, the UK, you want to work from uh, Madrid. So from here, for example, after that, it's more uh, where you will find the right profile. Uh, if you're a, a, a tech company, having find a lot of developers it can be hard in many uh, countries. Uh, after that, uh, what will be um, uh, the easy way to uh, uh, expand also uh, a real hub. Uh, but it's true that um, um, there is some um, um, hub all over the world. If you take Asia, it will be Singapore or Hong Kong. If you take uh, um, Latin America, it's interesting because it can be both Brazil or Miami because a lot of companies are run from Miami to uh, all the Latin uh, region. And after that, the states, it's East and West Coast. Uh, and uh, Africa or Middle East can be handled from, from Europe. Uh, that's what I've learned. But um, as soon as you want to really be local and have a significant business, you need to have some local team. It's uh, obvious, but um, that's what we see. Yes. A few questions. Uh, first of all, do you have some kind of budget in mind when you target a specific country? Um, uh, depending on what kind of budget you're talking about, um, if, because there's a lot of different budget, marketing, offices, uh, team, um, distribution. Uh, so uh, um, I think the, the, the what, I've, what I've seen uh, in the last companies I, I were and, and today is like, in a way, we are in a mood where we, sh we secure some distribution deal that will bring some um, revenues, guarantee revenues for the next two years. And based on this revenue, we are able to build a team. Okay. okay? So you, you enter a market not with the team, but more like with a reseller before that? Yeah, 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 but directly we put the team. Meaning that, for example, if you take uh, Deezer in, uh, I don't know, in... Um, in the UK, the first move, uh, we had a deal with uh, Everything Everywhere, who is a, a major um, carrier over there. We know that before going there, we know we will have this kind of revenue, so we will be able to put a team. And after that, we decide also to invest more by marketing and stuff. So it was really a budget that we defined by saying, okay, we want to reach this kind of numbers of people. We, wanna, we, we, want, we, we need this team to do it. And, um, and uh, it was easy. Uh, uh, to control uh, if it's real, um, in a way, uh, jumping in nowhere, uh, saying, for example, um, what we have done in Brazil uh, with Netflix or, or, or with Deezer, were really an estimation of what will be uh, the potential reach of uh, clients we will have. But to do so, what we do is like we do we did um, pre uh, register registration, the six months before launching. So we have an idea about how big it will be. It's an idea, very vague, but 
you can help. You, you have to find some ways around. After that, of course, if you put, uh, you know the budget, if you have to put three people in office, uh, some marketing expense, it's a little bit different from, from France, but in a way, it's not a big change. Okay, no, and another question I will hand over afterwards. Um, in impact on time, which is kind of a critical resource we, we have, can you give some estimates on the time needed to set up a particular office or business in a, in a, in so a country? Yeah, depending on the strategy. If, if, it, if you need a, a distribution deal before, if you um, need to have uh, booked some uh, marketing investment, you can take time before going there. But after that, it can be very, very fast in a way. Uh, a lot of, especially in Europe, where you know the European rules, you have the same money, you have a lot of methods of payment who are the same, you just have to change the language, it can be fast. If you go to uh, Brazil, a little bit more complicated because you have local tax, very important, and all your revenues you get from there have to stay in Brazil. So it's tricky and you know you have to think about what will be at the end the organization for that. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, um, for us, we uh, at Netflix or 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 or, or Deezer, it, it was between three months to one year, depending on the countries. Hi, um, what's the most unexpected challenge you had to face? Um, going global, and uh, conversely, what's the most unexpected benefit you got, or unexpected trick that worked out? So, um, unexpected challenge. Um, I think the. Uh, uh, I will say, uh, as we have, um, I had the chance to work for uh, quite two successful product, uh, music and, and, and videos and, and shows and good platforms. Uh, we didn't have so many uh, issues around distribution. It was more about finding the right people, really, um, because that will make the difference. Uh, short term and long term, meaning if these people are able to manage a team, able to really do the, the things well and uh, help you, and uh, that's what will uh, get a, a lot of value. And um, um, the second part of what, what works very well, uh, for example, um, we were surprised. We just launched Netflix uh, in Spain and Italy last week, and, and we have amazing numbers in Italy. <laughs> we don't know why. Um, no reason, you know, behind the pre-registration was asked for uh, Spain. Um, no, uh, uh, it's a mobile-centric country. Why? Uh, People use their PC to go to watch Netflix. I don't know. And on the Deezer side, it was uh, the big success we had in Brazil. Um, it's uh, as it's still a bit an emerging territory for um, credit card penetration, for uh, 3G, 4G network, for many things. And even so, we had uh, a lot of people consume and pay for music. In terms of uh, marketing execution. Uh, would you recommend something like to start with the PR before other things? Or what is the order of the marketing uh, channels you use? Yeah. So I think it's... Um, uh, uh, both are, are, are in your strategy. Both are, are important between, uh, if you say PR, for uh, having some uh, free marketing in a way and, and good... Uh, uh, press and, and uh, on the brand. Um, after that, you need to know already before going if you use some, uh, uh, you know, like Facebook or Google um, ad, ad model that you really need to know what will be your investment. And that's really easy to do it even from France to just test and see how it will respond. Um, so um, I think both are important. After that, it's uh, for your own business. Usually, you know what uh, uh, will work. Uh, uh, but um, uh, at Deezer or Netflix, we use both. Both are used a lot. Uh, for example, uh, um, the launch in uh, in Spain and um, and Italy. Uh, we uh, 
really uh, used a lot of PR. It's easy uh, when you're when when you're in Netflix. It easier, it was not so bad, not not so easy. But we have some some tricks around artists and journalists. And after that, we went first through uh, really digital uh, campaigns to reach the early adopters, as you uh, know. And it was really how to get the influencers that tomorrow will sell for you the offer. Hi. <coughs> In your experience, what is the what defines ultimately the, the sequence of uh, of countries that either in Deezer or Netflix you you went through? Is it more on the strategic metrics markets, or is it more we found the right people? Um, so that's that's um, that's a point where um, I will say uh, it's it's a, it's a difficult one because. Um, you know, like you have the choice. Um, some of your, uh, you, you will think where I have to go. You can think that with your shoulder and say, okay, do I have to go first to the US? And that's it. I am an international and I have some value because I am the US. But uh, in the meantime, the US market is one of the most competitive and the most challenging. Uh, uh, and uh, even on the cultural thing, people are really different and management is really different, believe me. Uh, that's one point. So after that, it's really to take into consideration. And, and we know that some big company like Von Privé uh, or uh, others had a very hard time in, in, in the US. So it's, it's not easy. And after that, um, you can pick another strategy, say, OK, um, I will go close from where I am. So in the UK, Belgium, Germany, Spain. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, I think it's a, it's a choice to pick one at minimum to have some experience some feedback. It, it can, in one year, uh, if you launch in, uh, in, in, in the UK or, or in Spain, you will have some feedback. You will know a little bit more about your organization, your project, your model. You will test a lot of things around the advertising. You have a lot of experience, and after that, you can go faster. Uh, 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 Netflix at the beginning was one by one. Now it's a big waves of six, seven, ten countries. When I was at Deezer, we 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 start with small uh, first one and two countries, and then we go global directly. But you need first to have some experience, some feedbacks. Yeah, um, my question is more related to a legal and organizational structure. So uh, it, it was mentioned before you could manage, uh, for, for example, European activities out of uh, just one hub or, um, f fund, uh, or found and fund uh, local subsidiaries in, in each of the regions or markets. And then um, related to that, um, kind of the P&L responsibility, like would you install a team locally that then is uh, kind of a cost center, or do you actually have local P&L responsibility where someone is, um, where a region has to fund itself after some time and um, you basically just have dividend streams going up to a holding level? Yeah, so that's part of, uh, of, the, of the discussion, of course, and um, so Europe will be easier by the fact that in a way you don't have to uh, um, create uh, subsidiaries and to have legal identity and to have um, even the local contract it's something quite easy uh, the law is quite similar uh, except for maybe the UK to be different than for the others uh, I think that in Europe it's not a big co a big point um, as I said uh, US will be one Brazil will be one and um, Singapore for example will be one because in this case uh, in Singapore, you're allowed to have, uh, if I remember well, one year of uh, representation in a way. We have people on the, on, the, on, the, on, on the ground and trying to do the business. But after that, you need to create your own uh, subsidiaries, a legal entity. So that uh, can be a challenge at this time. Uh, so um, I think there is a lot of, um, you know, like... Uh, uh, companies who can help on that. There's a lot of experts. It's, it's not a. Uh, it's, it's not so complicated. I think it's more uh, sometimes uh, uh, co uh, just a lot of time. 
uh, to do that, but you have to think about it and to uh, um, to 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 uh, um, meet some people to talk about it. But if you, you there's so many companies today, French companies especially also, who went to uh, Singapore or to uh, uh, Rio uh, or uh, to the States that you can share experience easily, I guess. So. Yeah, um, to a couple of questions. I was wondering if, first of all, you give an idea of um, sort of what size Netflix was before it started the international expansion and sort of how it scaled up, like the number of people, maybe in just like two or three levels. Uh, so I went there uh, at this time at Netflix. Uh, as you know, Netflix is, is not a startup anymore. But it's a startup, by the way, that they changed their business model by switching from DVD uh, rent to real streaming service. So it was a big change. But to, for your question, I think, uh, especially an American company, uh, it took them some time to, to move. Uh, they were uh, uh, getting a lot of money already before moving to uh, other for Canada or Mexico. So. Uh, um, it's it's a specific one, uh, and if you if you take uh, Deezer, it was as soon as we proved to our shareholders that we have um, a scalable and, and 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 a good model in France, they tell us very fast go uh, try in one country. So it was like that, and after that, it's more about do you need to have some cash flow to do your own expansion, or are you ready to invest? So usually today uh, you will see a lot of. Uh, Big companies that will uh, invest in a way and keep, uh, uh, and uh, will lose some money at the beginning because they will invest massively to get uh, the first country running. Yeah, that's a, one of follow uh, following question I had. Did you guys actually, well, in the case of Netflix, did you need to raise outside capital to do the expansion, or was that all financed from cash within the so, company? So uh, Netflix went to IPO to get a lot of money to to be able to to, to buy the right for worldwide. And um, and uh, and Deezer uh, uh, um, ra uh, rose some money to uh, um, uh, new shareholders that allow uh, them to uh, expand uh, globally. Okay. Uh, last question. I'm looking at the slide up there. It seems like on the local teams you have sort of the more business creation, acquisition, so marketing, business development, PR. Whereas it looks like well, you, you have international coordinator and finance. I guess the question is are, are were the market, uh, the local teams purely focused on business acquisition, or was there some sort of back office functions, like you mentioned, for instance, Brazil, all the issues with tax and you know the currency yeah. controls? Did you have to have somebody local on the ground dealing with that, or did you, was that done at the headquarter level through like uh, international so, consultancy or something? Yeah, the the the, um, the 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 local team in the tech companies, what I I, I know from my experience, you do, you don't have the, your product team uh, away, you don't have your HR or your, even your uh, um, uh, marketing uh, a part of it. What, what you will have locally is really people who are to manage uh, PR, for example, who will have to manage uh, partnerships, local partnerships. Um, that's why it's really, as you were, uh, as you were mentioning, uh, the front part of the company, uh, all the back office. Uh, if you take uh, um, the big companies, uh, they are uh, all where they were found, in a way. Uh, uh, if you take uh, uh, some some if you take Facebook or, or, or PayPal or Netflix or Deezer, the, the engineers stay where uh, the company was um, found. And, and after that, usually when you move some people uh, around, it's mostly uh, um, uh, development and uh, business development, partnerships, marketing. That's where uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's easier in a way. Wow. Thank you, Clément, and thank, thank you. you all for coming. I will upload the slides and the video as soon as uh, it will be ready. Thank you.